Hello, welcome to our online version of our Key Stage 3 information evening. My name is Chris Ives, I'm the Associate Head Teacher and I'll be talking to you about the curriculum and things that have happened recently that we'd like you to bear in mind. Kate Douglas will talk about the approach to Key Stage 3, Kate is Assistant Head Teacher, and then Kate Baplern and Becky Barclay will talk about English and Maths. So what is our curriculum? This is a quote that we really like using and have used for a number of years. Um, a quote from the late Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. Years ago I came across Parkinson's Law. Work expands to fill the time available for its completion. Since then I've discovered another more hopeful principle. Young people grow to fill the space we create for them. So our talk about the curriculum this evening is really to describe the type of space that we create at St. Aidan's. I will talk to you later about results and the subjects that we do and the way that is organised, but we must remember, and we're very pleased to, to tell you that there's lots more going on at St. Aidan's and helping our young people to develop and understand who they're going to be as they grow up is really important to us. The curriculum covers all sorts of things, including our music, our sports, our clubs and activities that happen outside of lessons as well. So it's within that context, the overall space that we create, that we talk about the curriculum. I'd like you to bear that in mind as we talk about other things to do with lessons. You may be aware that GCSE grading has changed. Instead of using A star to G, as it has done for quite a number of years, including when I did my O levels, actually A to G, um, back at school. Um, it's now changed from those letters to use numbers one to nine. And I've laid it out like this because I think it's important to see the equivalence. So in the new system, three, four boundary is the same as an old D to C. So four and above is equivalent to a C and above previously. That's been a pass at a level two qualification. And at the top end, the seven and above, seven, eight, nine, is equivalent to an old A and A star. Now I've laid it out like this because I think it's important for us to understand what we talk about when we look at the numbered grades and we use these as forecast grades as we go through the school. For me, four seems a bit further away from the top in my brain than a C did away from an A to an A star. And even a seven, which is equivalent to an old A, seems maybe a bit further away from the top than an A did from an A star. So I think it's important that we help students to understand where they are on that scale, where they're aiming towards. And remember that a four plus is the threshold for level two qualifications, for example, in English and maths. And they're doing really, really well if they're aiming towards that, just the same as they would have done really well if they were aiming previously towards a C. And the top grades, Instead of having an A and A star, it's really important that students recognise the top grades, seven to nine. They've done very, very well if they're getting sevens and above in those uh, subjects and if that's what they're aiming towards. So I just wanted to lay that out so you could see, because you may well be more used to A star to G grades, so you can see how the new gradings overlay on top of the old ones. As your child goes through, Key Stage 3 will provide you with some grades that will help you to understand how well they're doing at school. We tend not to give grades 1 to 9 because we uh, don't think that's particularly helpful, but we will give you grades that give uh, whether there's a cause for concern or whether your student is doing well or doing very well in their studies. And we break these down into code grades. That's our code for learning which is about attitudes to learning that we think are important within community, organisation, determination and enterprise, and a progress grade. So this won't be a one to nine grade. It will be a grade saying whether there's a concern in terms of your child's progress or whether they're doing well or very well in their studies. That for us is compared to benchmarks, which are based on one to nine grades, but we don't provide those. We just provide you with an indicator of how well they're doing. Here's an example of one of the progress reviews. This one is year seven, that's in February um, for all students in year seven. And you can see there the code for learning grades um, indicated by good, very good, some concern, etc., and the progress grade, which is to do with their academic progress. Talked a bit about forecast or 
great all benchmarks in terms of one to nine and and talked about prior attainment for students in actual fact what we provide is what's called a chances graph and to explain what this means uh, we use um, uh, national data an external company that uses national data looking at um, prior attainment for example at key stage two and the likely outcomes gained for GCSEs um, at the end of the five years kind of gap between year six and and year 11 and they produce for us a chances graph so this gives an idea based on an individual's prior attainment profile what those sorts of students or similar students in that situation ended up receiving as GCSE grades at the end and as you can see in this case the fives is what you might consider to be the most likely grade to achieve but it's not most likely in terms of every student some students as you can see actually achieved sevens with a similar prior attainment profile um, those students will have worked hard or, or, or you know, been in a particular situation and achieved better than most other students there in terms of likelihood uh, some on the other end of the scale achieve fours or threes even and so some of that's dependent on their attitudes um, or the uh, types of assessments they made in year six so even though we might talk about a forecast grade maybe there being a five or a forecast range of being a four to six in actual fact um, it is really down to what happens with a student in that five years and there is opportunity as you can see for students to achieve grades over and above or below um, what may be expected of them next few slides give a bit more of an indication as to how we might give a progress grade so in this case you can see a chances graph and grades six to eight are the ones with the highest bars that was what we would call a forecast range for this student in particular this is down to student level the teacher may well have projected a seven potentially thinking maybe this was a six in terms of the work that they've seen the student doing and hidden behind my picture there is the word good so in this case the teacher is saying progress is good based on their internal projections of the work they've been doing and comparing that to the forecast range benchmarks in this case we've still got a six to eight uh, forecast range but the teacher is actually projecting grades quite a bit lower than that um, in the work that they've seen from the student over a period of time and looking at different types of assessments and so there the teacher is saying that actually there's a concern so it's raising a concern thinking about what may be possible for the student but thinking that actually our projections are looking like they're significantly lower than that and that will be flagged up with a concern on the progress review report for this student in particular you can see they've got a different chances graph this one is highlighting four to six as the right most likely range of grades that may be achieved they may well achieve a seven the teacher is actually looking there at sort of six mostly in terms of projections potentially five six in terms of the work they've done and thinking about the student and the work they are doing thinking about the relationship there between the six and the forecast range the teachers decided to put very good in terms of their progress to explain the way we group students in year seven and eight um, in year seven largely form group teaching we go to smaller groups in practical subjects such as technology art and music and sometimes there might be a small group there which is an overlap of two different forms but largely they're taught in form groups we do um, use learning support groups and some students will come out of their form groups and be taught in smaller groups according to their needs in english and maths in year seven english we are sticking to form group teaching and in maths we've moved to a banded system so there's no setting that happens although students in maths will be taught according to ability but very broadly banded accordingly in year eight we continue that banding into science humanities english and maths they're not banded the same in every subject they're banded within the subject so a student may find themselves according to their ability in that subject banded higher or lower in each of those subjects again there's no specific hard setting we use a banding system and it's not streamed so they're not banded into the same across all subjects it's a individual subject banding with no firm setting as i mentioned at the beginning um, with that quote from the rabbi jonathan sachs um, what's the space that we create for them well hopefully you've seen a bit more about the organization of subjects and a bit of information about how um, gcse's work just to really look forward 
And I'm showing you this information not because this is all we do. If you remember, I talked about the curriculum expanding beyond lessons and being involved in all sorts of extracurricular activities. But I want to show you this year's results because I think it will help you to have some confidence in the overall way we structure our curriculum and the teaching and the organisation of our groups as students move through Key Stage 3 and into Key Stage 4. So this year's results were most slightly different with centre assessed grades in these times. Uh, we have some superb results. So 4 to 9, if you remember, that's an old C plus level 2 pass qualification in all subjects. Um, across all subjects, all grades, 95% of those grades were at that level 2 pass, which is a fantastic uh, set of results. And 48, sorry, 47% of students at the highest 7 to 9 grades, that matches almost 48% in 2018. And we regularly do very well at those very high end grades as well. The next one, plus 0.7 progress 8, is a really important figure. So this looks at progress as we've been talking about already in terms of benchmarks and chances graphs, looks at progress from Key Stage 2 to Key Stage 4 to GCSE. And the plus 0.7 means compared to national figures, students at St Aidan's achieve across the ability range on average over um, half, nearly three quarters of a grade higher than they would if they were educated at other schools or in other parts of the country. So this school is, is really doing very well in terms of making sure students have good value added from Key Stage 2 to Key Stage 4. And then at the end, in English and Maths, just so you can see that Level 2 pass, 92% of students gain that in both English and Maths. Again, I just wanted to point out that gives you an idea of the success our students have in moving through Key Stage 3 into Key Stage 4 and then through that to destinations beyond. And that's just to give you a bit of confidence that the space we create for our students works extremely well and they come out of that with very good outcomes. Hello, my name's Kate Douglas. I'm an assistant head at St Aidan's School and part of my role is monitoring progress at Key Stage 3. So for our students at St Aidan's, Key Stage 3 is a time when we want them to enjoy a broad and balanced curriculum. Um, you know, our pupils follow English, maths, humanities, languages, and then obviously we've got the other subjects such as art, IT, design, technology, PE. We want pupils to enjoy their learning, to really engage uh, in all of their lessons at St Aidan's and to really gain an understanding and a level of knowledge of what those subjects are all about. Um, at the same time, we, with that academic slant, we also do want um, our students to contribute and benefit from all of the extracurricular uh, life that we have here at St Aidan's, all the clubs and societies that they that they can join. Um, and that's really important. And one of the things we do look at and the form tutors do look at is monitoring those clubs that they join and looking at uh, opportunities to encourage people to join all of those uh, wonderful experiences experiences and clubs and societies that we have here. In terms of day-to-day uh, -day school work, we do challenge pupils and something that I'm going to talk about a bit later on in the slides is sometimes the work is, a, is difficult and you know for the first time from primary school they might be finding some of the subject areas more difficult for them and you know that that building that resilience in our students is really important and our staff are very experienced in doing that um, and as I say I'll, I'll touch upon that a little bit later on in, in some of my other slides and we're also skilling them up obviously for those terminal exams in year 11 we will be asking them to revise and learn material and and sit exams that you know not quite in year seven and we do have a year seven exam week um, in the classroom but they, they will gradually move to the larger exam halls to gain those experiences of what it's like to sit uh, you know those all important GCSEs and then obviously moving on to A levels as well. 
So what we've been working on with both students and staff over the last few years is very much the growth mindset model from Carol Dweck, uh, really trying to instill um, with students the idea that through um, effort and cultivating your efforts, you can grow through application and experience and trying to offer in a daily diet at school those experiences in the classroom and outside of the classroom uh, for that growth mindset to happen. We do also spend uh, time discussing with students about what success looks like and obviously uh, looking at that idea that sometimes success is, is not a linear line of smoothness all the way to the end goal but actually in reality there's a bit of a scramble sometimes to get to where you need to to be so again you know looking at all of those aspects of how does your growth mindset allow you to achieve the goals that you would like to achieve Probably an easier explanation as well for our students is that feeling of being in the learning pit as well. Uh, again, you know, the uncomfortableness of handling new work or meeting new people. Uh, and we call it the learning pit that, you know, you, you've got to get in that pit um, to get those skills and the understanding to, you know, eventually come out to where you need to be. And obviously these skills are important because, you know, we know our pupils now and our students now, the, the, the courses are linear now, uh, there's, a, there's a greater emphasis on effective revision and recall, there's more content in the specifications, so students have more to learn. So, you know, getting into that mindset quickly of managing the day-to-day -day life of school and, you know, all those aspects that come with it uh, are really important. And that's why we work very hard with our pupils to, to, to make sure that they have those skills to manage the more demanding aspects of their academic work. So in terms of what that looks like in a classroom, uh, we will set tasks that you know, are challenging and we will again ask pupils to perhaps peer assess or self assess their work you know to scaffold their understanding and to help support you know that those ideas of learning and and working with their their peers in the classroom um again one of the key things in you know in learning is that you know very much uh, trying to work through those problems and find solutions with other people and not immediately give help uh, further deepens understanding um, and again along the way we will be giving high quality feedback to pupils our staff are very experienced um, on this and it could be in the terms of sort of discuss uh, in a discursive way in the classroom through um, you know sort of oral feedback and again written feedback is also given so one of the uh, important aspects of uh, being in the classroom is abiding by our school code. Our code uh, is something that we use every day and it's fundamental to the good relationships in the classroom and behaviours that promote learning. So the St Aidan's Code for Learning is split into four sections. The first one is community and we're looking for students to work together cooperatively, have respect for others and engage positively in their learning in the classroom. The second part to the code is organisation. Uh, obviously, we want students to meet deadlines, hand in homework on time, be ready to learn, have the right equipment in the classroom and be able to plan ahead and reflect on you know, what they might need to bring into school. Determination is all about effort and focusing on the tasks. Uh, are, are they resilient in their learning? You know, do they, do they give up easily or do they really get stuck in? And are they prepared to work hard? And then fi the final part is enterprise. Uh, you know, are they able to take the initiative? Can they look at an alternative solution to a problem? Um, can they use the resources available intelligently? And can they think independently? And can they set goals? Um, this code is used also in our progress reviews that are sent home. And really, this should underpin everything that's going on with their learning. 
Hi everyone, my name is Kate Blackburn and my role is Key Stage 3 Coordinator for English here at St Aidan's. I'm going to start by showing you some national focuses for English at the minute and then explain how we are implementing them at St Aidan's. Across the country at the moment, there is a large focus on reading across the curriculum and for schools to provide a broad curriculum that gives students the opportunity to be introduced to a wide range of texts, which will then develop their reading. There is a focus on designing curriculums that develop skills and the individual rather than just focusing on GCSE assessments too early. So from September 2019, we introduced a brand new thematic curriculum that enabled us to adhere to these national standards. The thematic curriculum means that each term is focused on a theme as opposed to a specific aspect of reading or writing. It allows for a much wider scope for introducing students to a genuinely diverse range of texts. From fiction to non-fiction to poetry to media, students are able to develop their cognitive skills by making links across a range of texts that are all linked through the same theme. By doing this, we are able to engage students within a wide variety of different types of reading. So in year seven, we begin with the theme of heroes. We consider heroes from all walks of life, from Greta Thunberg to Sir Lancelot to Malala Yousafzai. You can see how we intersperse both fiction and non-fiction. The first assessment they complete at the beginning of October is a descriptive writing assessment, as this will be familiar territory for them. The skills learnt here are not that different from the ones they learn in year six, just at a more advanced level. It therefore makes a nice transition, giving students confidence and helping them to settle into their lessons. Across the year, Year 7 will complete two reading and two writing assessments. These levels will help us in measuring progress, but are not used for setting, as from September 2021, all Key Stage 3 classes will be mixed ability so as to not to limit any student. To promote reading even further across the curriculum, each Key Stage 3 class has a class reader for about 20 to 30 minutes once a week. This is a book chosen by the class teacher that they read together as a group. It is one meant to be purely enjoyed and not studied. It's there to engage students in talking about literature in a fun and current way. The thematic approach is implemented as a way to build on skills at Key Stage 2 while also providing lessons that stretch and challenge each student. The diverse range of texts that arises from this thematic approach means that students are introduced to 19th century and 20th century literature from a very early stage, enabling for a smooth transition into Key Stage 4 and a well-rounded student that has come to understand more about the world around them. To help your child at home, please encourage them to read widely and read with them. Research has shown that when other people engage with the reading, it makes it much more enjoyable and they are likely to carry it on for a much longer. There are reading lists available on the school website and departments and then under library. You can also help your child by engaging with your child's opinions on the news articles and topics in lessons and encouraging them to proofread their homework every time. Homework is set weekly and can range from spellings to reading and writing tasks. Please see the school website for the department marking policy. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation and I look forward to seeing you and your child in September. Hello, I'm Mrs Barclay and I'm responsible for Key Stage 3 Maths, that's Year 7 through to Year 9. I'm part of a highly experienced and enthusiastic department consisting of 15 math specialists. We believe that all pupils are capable of achieving high standards in mathematics and our aim is to enable pupils to achieve confidence and competence by building the foundations. We do this through a collaboratively planned scheme of work with a mastery approach. We have an ambitious scheme of work which secures and builds on pupils' achievements at Key Stage 2. We develop fluency through engaging, exciting and enjoyable lessons. We encourage students to develop reasoning and problem-solving abilities. We are often heard asking students why, as being able to explain enables a greater depth of understanding. We want to promote independent learning. This is so important as it develops creativity and intellectual curiosity. Individual learning is about pupils being active rather than passive, so pupils working out their answers. 
students have an opportunity to apply their knowledge through individual and teamwork. We want them to understand the basics, so we move away from having to remember vast amounts, understanding concepts. We focus on depth, securing understanding rather than pushing onto the content in GCSE. The day to day. Students are taught in maths classes based on information from primary school and data that's been collected since they started here at St Aidan's. The classes are structured into three tiers. The aim being that we want the students to be in the correct learning environment. Regarding the scheme of work, a large majority of pupils progress through the scheme of work at a similar rate, with differentiation and extension achieved by emphasising deep knowledge. By this we mean problem solving and reasoning. Homework. Homework should be given around about once a week. This will consist of a mix of numeracy skills and end of unit assessments, as well as my maths. Regarding assessments, as students come from a mix of schools and learning environments, we review the tiers three times a year in the form of an end of term assessment. That is at Christmas time, Easter time and summer time. Remember the aim being to get our students in the correct learning environment. Pupils will generally take the same exam, promoting transparency and allowing fluidity between the tiers. Home learning. You can support at home. We recognise that home is a powerful learning environment. Therefore, we encourage pupils to collaborate with families in order to practice and consolidate the lessons. This can be done in many ways, but here are a few. Practicing the functional maths. For example, when you go shopping, maybe you can get your child to do a running total. If they're on public transport, get them to read the timetable. Plenty of time for baking and cooking at home, using scales and an analogue clock and a digital clock. Football scores, rugby, hockey, general functional maths. And of course, the times tables. I know a lot of work has been done at primary school on our times tables, but it really does underpin the maths that we do every single day in secondary school. Also, be inquisitive. New methods are just as good as old. There really is no right or wrong way. And finally, please encourage your child to ask for help. It really does show resilience and we are here to help your child. Thank you.